Voice of Indiana County, WCCS, AM 1160 and 101.1 FM. She is the executive director of the United Way of Indiana County. She's Jane lockard Clausen. On the telephone with us and presented by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you on the air with us here today. The United Way is such a vital part of our community. And we talked during the campaign, but then through the course of the year, we need to we need to get connected a little bit more often, Jane, because uh, the work is just ongoing for the United Way all throughout the year. And today, especially, this is Giving Tuesday all across the world. Right. It's Giving Tuesday now, which is a little different than the Giving Tuesday that's in the fall, I think in November time. Um, this one is particular because of the COVID crisis. Um, and it was really kind of formed to enhance the awareness of um, all the frontline workers, all the people that are doing, continuing to do their work for people in our communities all across the world, um, to raise that awareness, to get them involved, to say thank you, and to and, and that thank you can be in a variety of ways, depending on, you know, what, what somebody's so inclined to do. But, um, yeah, it's really a chance to, to raise the awareness. And, you know, I think it's just so important. I mean, you know, it's anytime we have a chance to say thank you to our, our doctors and our nurses and our home health aides and everybody that works in any department of the hospital that's helping to keep things running and personal care homes and nursing homes and, you know, of course, our grocery stores. But there's also that whole category of, of people that I think, um, you know, sometimes aren't really recognized and thought about. Um, and that's a lot of our partner agencies for the United Way that are still doing their services. They're still providing that support to the community. Um, and, and there's a lot of really great stuff that's happening. Yeah. Well, one of the things about it is I know that you're not surprised in any way at about the way that Indiana County people respond to an emergency. And they certainly have now, haven't they? Oh, they absolutely have. We established um, the Emergency Relief Fund here just a couple weeks ago. We seeded it with about $53,000 from the United Way, um, and then we have been asking for, for donations into that. And, um, I, and we're, we've partnered with ICAP. ICAP is doing all the assessments that are coming in, and um, we're giving out some small grants to families, individual or, or multi-person families, just to kind of help you know, bridge something until either they got their stimulus check or maybe unemployment checks. Um, but we have, um, I think we have given out close to $80,000 in support so far. It's, um, it's close to 600 people, I believe, that have been impacted by that, those funds. Um, and it is really, it's just, it's so heartwarming. It's unbelievable, um, you know, how people step up. And I know people are donating directly to a lot of different organizations right now as well. So um, Indiana County, it's just, Indiana County really does make you proud because there's just so much good stuff that happens here. And um, you you can't thank people enough. You just you can say it as much as you want. But, you know, people know it's just it's still not enough. Yeah, we can thank people for one of the really interesting things to me is how so many of these agencies that have their regular missions still continue in that aspect. But they also have expanded their mission field so that they can help with COVID-19 relief directly. And you think about agencies like the Alice Paul House and Accessibilities and uh, mm-hmm. Catholic Charities. The Chevy Chase Center has been huge. Uh, just right. the way that Indiana County does this is, is just amazing. Yeah, it's it, it really is. I mean, and it's important to recognize, I mean, you know, people's social needs still exist, and particularly in a crisis. And they've actually gotten worse, and they're going to continue to get worse even as we lift our restrictions, you know, there's going to be more things that are going to come out of the woodwork. People maybe that, have, um, you know, have been hesitant to perhaps ask for that help that they needed. I think we're going to continue as a, as a county, as a community to see more of that coming out. But yeah, I mean, you know, our, our agencies have adapted. They're doing things through telehealth. Um, you know, accessibility is doing the early intervention services virtually now with their therapists, mm-hmm. with the children from birth to three. And yeah, Alice Paul houses, still doing their services. They're just adapting ways that they do it. But, you know, people still need that protection. They still need that advocacy. Um, Catholic Charities is continuing to do, you know, material assistance. They're still available. Um, Most of the services are, you know, are they have figured out how to do things virtually. Open Door is another good example there, too, because, um, again, you know, if people who are struggling with addiction, they still need their supports. Now, all of these organizations are saying that they're seeing their their need for services or it's declining right at the moment because people are afraid um, mm-hmm. they're not sure how this is going to work or they're afraid to 
to kind of, you know, venture out and they don't understand perhaps how they can get a service that they maybe normally would have gotten face to face. Um, but you know, the, the, these people in these organizations are, are, um, adapting to that Salvation Army. They've been distributing meals on Wednesdays. Um, visiting nurses, of course, is, are, are still going out. So, um, you know, there's a lot of mental and emotional needs that are out there. I just, I, I did a survey here over the last week or so with all of our partner agencies. Mm-hmm. And one of the themes that is coming across there is they're either currently seeing or they're definitely anticipating the um, fallout with the mental stress, the emotional stress of people being at home. Yeah. Um, you know, children, I, I heard this from across several of our organizations that provide children's services, Head Start, um, Indie Kids, um, Accessibility, it's, you know, Alice Paul House as well, where you know, children are maybe not getting the same kind of support that they would get if they were in their services. Mm-hmm. And so they're expecting to have behavior issues. And, you know, some of that, you know, based on the trauma of this whole crisis and what's happening in their household, maybe there's not enough food or maybe there's just not enough um, parenting or maybe it's not a good home environment in some way or shape or another. Um, so our kids are probably much more affected than what we're really realizing. And yeah. These agencies are there to step up. They're reaching out to them at least. You know, they might not be able to do face to face right now, but they're at least reaching out to the families and saying, "How's it going? What do you need?" And that's that's just as important as um, you know so many other things that are that are happening out there. That um, you know, I, I think it's important for everybody to realize that you know nonprofits are still figuring out a way to make it happen. Yeah, we're talking with Jane Lockard Clausen, who is the executive director of the United Way of Indiana County. So, for Giving Tuesday now, what are some of the things that we can do right here in Indiana County? Well, you know, Giving Tuesday now is like I said, it's about um, it's not just about you know giving money; it's about giving giving back to our, our our workers, the people that are doing all these good deeds. So, there's a lot of different ways that people can kind of just show their appreciation. Um, they can you know, put a sign in their window that says, you know, we thank our heroes or we thank our front line or we thank, you know, a particular group. Um, they can, you know, donate a meal to somebody. Um, just, you know, putting messages on social media goes a long way. A lot of people have so many different people following them. And even just a general message um, is really, really helpful. You know, maybe leave a little item or an extra little tip if you're ordering from a restaurant or, you know, from your postal service worker, they're they're going around and still doing what they need to do too, and there's risks there. Um, you know, just being there. You know, mm-hmm. and 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 of course, there's always those options of making a donation, whether it's to the emergency relief fund or United Way in general. Um, any of these agencies that are doing anything, they're all going to be struggling. Again, from my survey, you know, their their needs are going to be great. Um, the needs for protective equipment and masks and cleaning supplies and that sort of thing. And um, we're actually also kicking off a supply drive that we will distribute. Whatever we collect, we'll distribute across these agencies. Because again, from my survey, that's one of their concerns is being able to afford now all these extra things that are going to be needed and supplies, paper products, disinfectant products, hand sanitizers, um, you know, any of that kind of stuff is something that they have all mentioned that they're going to be needing to really have some extra budgetary expenses on. So we've, we've organized that. Um, if anybody would like to, to um, help that, that supply drive, it can be dropped off at the Salvation Army, at, out at the ICAP Food Bank, or at the Chevy Chase Community Center, a couple different places around town to drop something off. Mm-hmm. Um, we may be trying to organize something at the sto- in front of the stores as well just to make it easy for people to drop too. But um, this is at least a way that they can begin to help. Yeah, and if they want to give to the uh, United Way General Fund, they can do that and also find resources about those other organizations as well at your website and Facebook, yes? Right, yes. And I also want to mention, too, you know, not to forget that, um, you know, our the, the, the PA211, which is the 24-hour information and referral service, has been seeing an increase in calls, naturally, people looking for where can they get help for different kinds of things. And that is a resource out there for anybody who needs any kind of help in finding something even finding a place that they can perhaps volunteer at. 211 is a wonderful resource. Um, it's funded for Indiana County through the United Way. Mm-hmm. And it's a 24 7, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right. So just dial 211. Yes. That's terrific stuff. Or you can text. They can text. It's 898 um, 211. Mm-hmm. And they can text and just you know put their zip code in, and then they will get a text back and they can communicate that way too. So it's, okay. there's a variety of different ways. All right. UWIndianaCounty.org is where you need to go to find all these resources. That's right. Jane, thanks so much for spending some time with us today on Giving Tuesday Now Day. Appreciate it. 
Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. Have a great day. You too.